Cool, cool. Welcome today to, uh, my name is Sean Keener. I'm from the Boots and All Travel Network and I'm starting, trying something new today. It's called uh, Interview with a Traveler. And I was introduced to Laura R. recently, who is, who's our guest. Do you want to say hello, Laura? Can you hear me? Hello. Okay, okay cool, cool. Maybe it got delayed there. The, uh, I got introduced to Laura R. recently as someone that has done a total of 11 Intrepid Travel trips. Intrepid is a, a company, at intrepidtravel.com, that does m small group adventure tours. And she did nine trips in one year. And I wanted to learn more about the why and what and so on and so forth. So can you tell me, Laura, why and what made you want to do nine intrepid trips within one year? Well, um, I know I love to travel. I know I like to go to places that uh, my parents aren't necessarily comfortable with me going and traveling by myself. Uh, and I know I am um, somebody who likes to be with other people. Like I wanted, to, I took off a year of work and I went to travel, but I didn't want to uh, eat dinner by myself for ten months in a row. Um, and I didn't want to always have to be looking for uh, the next thing to do because as a type A personality, as a planner, like I knew I wouldn't enjoy where I was in the moment because I would always be planning and worrying about the next stage. Um, so I had done an intrepid trip, a couple of intrepid trips before and had really good experiences with them um, before. So I decided, hey, why not like take off a year and go do this uh, kind of extravagant, epic adventure, but do it in an organized uh, type of fashion that um, would kind of meet my need to plan, but also help me explore different parts of the world. Very cool, very cool. Did you come back home after every trip, or did you just kind of connect the dots along the way? I didn't. I connected the dots along the way. Um, I was in South America, and I did four intrepid trips that were back-to-back. So essentially, it was 83 days of uh, travel, and that was really cool because a couple of the trips, other people were also doing back-to-back. -back. So I was together with um, a couple of Australians, and we were the three musketeers for about 53 days from Quito, Ecuador, all the way down to Santiago, um, Chile, and it was fabulous. We had wow. a lot of fun together. Wow. So and then when I was in Australia, um, because we had gotten to know each other, uh, when I was in Australia, I invited myself to hang out with them and to cool. stay with them a little bit too. Gotcha. So was that part of the Intrepid Trip or was that just a friendship you struck up via the Intrepid Trip? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I think you know, my friends here in the U.S. make fun of me that I have friends all over the world, but I really do have friends all over the world. Uh, and I think a lot of that is because of the Intrepid Trips. You know, when I'm traveling by myself, I... And maybe not as outgoing as I am when I am in this country, but for whatever reason, like the the safety and the comfort level of being on a, a trip, um, I think allowed me to open up more and to get to know people a little bit more. Um, and I appreciate that Intrepid is an Australian-based company. So I have friends in Australia and in uh, Great Britain and in um, Ireland and Norway and just kind of a, a different group of people. So for the folks that don't know, what, uh, what was, you've been on 11 total Intrepid trips. Is the group size consistent on all the trips you went on or was it different? You know, I, I think it's 12 to 15 from my knowledge. Yeah, um, I think they generally cap out around 12. Um, okay. Some of the tours I think can get up to 15 and I appreciate that. I am not somebody who uh, likes the big group tours. Like... Um, people getting off a charter bus or having to wear like name tag stickers. That's not my comfort level. I know like some people like that. Um, I like the small group of it, but I like that it's not just two people on the tour because, you know, it's a nice variety. Um, I found that most of the people on the Intrepid trips that I've done are people that are um, adventurous and they like to travel. They are comfortable traveling. They just don't want to have to spend a lot of time working out the details. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some other tour companies that are more focused, I think, on like um, finding the good bars, 
Um, and that's great for, for some people too, if that's their style. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not necessarily my style. And so I appreciate Intrepid's philosophy uh, as far as the travel goes. And what did you see that philosophy as? So it's not really kind of a drinking person's tour. It's more of a... Um, I like to think of Intrepid as, as responsible travel. So your, your group sizes are capped out because 12 is really about all you can take into some of these like local places. Intrepid uses um, public transportation on the basic trips, which was great because in Bolivia we were traveling in public buses and you know that to me is kind of the real culture. Um, you stay in local guest houses. Uh, one of the things I really appreciate about being on a tour is that there are no bed bugs in any of the places you go because it's with a company that you know checks out the hotels and, and the places that you're staying. Um, wow. I, I am not an adventurous enough spirit to show up in a town and and then find my bed to sleep in. Like I, I uh, for me to relax and enjoy, um, that that's a nice comfort. Cool. Um, Intrepid also, especially in in Asia, um, really endeavors to support some like local organizations. So, um, for example, these I think are are things that I never would have found on my own. Um, but when I was in Laos. Uh, we went to an organization that, um, I guess they, they work on prosthetic limbs for people that have been injured in landmines, um, and it's landmines that were dropped by my country during the Vietnam War, and this country that wasn't even involved in the war is still feeling the repercussions of this. And that's something that I wouldn't have taken the time to seek out on my own. Um, and uh, Intrepid took us there to give us the explanation of kind of what's going on, but also an opportunity um, to get involved if you want to. Um, they also, like when I was in Cambodia, I think a good chunk of people that go to Cambodia just go to Angkor Wat. They see the really cool temples and they are amazing, uh, but they don't necessarily go and visit the killing fields. And um, by no means is it a fun experience, but I think it's an important experience. And again, that's something that I don't know that I would have done on my own, and I appreciate that Intrepid pushes me into places that I would not necessarily go on my own. Okay, Laura. Laura, are you, you're not a travel blogger, are you? No. Okay, and you, you paid for your trips. Yes. You paid for all your trips because, you know, at Boots and All, we're kind of in the travel blogging world. We know a lot of these travel bloggers who go on all these trips for free and they talk about how great it is. It almost sounds like you're a, a PR person. You just, no. they, you just like it and you really resonate with their philosophy style and their product. Yeah. So yeah. that is really cool. So I, that's, I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you because it's, you know, if you get a free trip, I mean, who's not going to love it, right? Oh. But this is your hard-earned cash that you spent. Yes, but full disclosure with Intrepid, if you take 10 trips with them, your 11th trip is free. Wow. I mean, that sounds uh, like the coffee shop. That's cool. Right. So I, I did visit Tibet for free for two weeks. Uh, and wow. from now on, all of my trips with them, I get like a 10% discount. So Wow. So you're like the lifetime member club? Well, that's I'm cool. in the legend status, yeah. Jeez, that is awesome. So your 11th trip is free. Very cool. But you still have to get there, right? They don't take you there. You just have to show up and they take care of it from there. And there are some costs along the way to bear, correct? Correct. Um, yeah. But that's also one of the things that I like about this company. And there are different levels. Like they have basic trips, which don't have much included. Uh, original trips, which have some things included, some things not included. And then comfort trips, which have a lot more things included. Um, so maybe you show up to a city and you have two or three nights in that city, uh, depending on the level of the tour, you might have a couple included activities and then a couple days that are free. So that's really great for, for people that don't want to have to do all of the planning and organization um, to get from point A to point B and don't have to worry about the hotels. Uh, the, um, but then you can go personalize your own vacation and you can go off with other people that are on the trip with you or you can you know, do it on your own. Um, and it's like that with meals too. So I think it fits with different budgets. Uh, if you are on a super strict budget, then you can buy a loaf of bread and that can be your food for every meal. But if you want to really go experience some of the foodie cultures, you can do that. If you want to go eat street food, you can do that. So, um, yeah, not all the costs 
costs are included, but I would say for the most part, your, your transportation and your hotels are. Gotcha. So a few, yeah, a few, a, a few meals and stuff like that you have to take care right. of. Right. Right. So you spent a year doing these nine trips, right? So was it 12 months or nine months? that you? Did? It was 10 months. 10 months. And what, what did you spend total? Can you go into your budget on the airfare? Or actually, before I get to that, did you do any travel on your own in between? I did. Um, I did four months of intrepid trips in South America. And then I did Easter Island on my own, on my way to New Zealand. Uh, and I spent about a month in New Zealand. I stayed with a friend that I'd met on a previous intrepid trip when I was in New Zealand. And then I popped over to Australia and did Australia on my own, staying with a friend that I had met on an intrepid trip. Oh. And then I went to Asia and I did um, five months in Asia with intrepid. Wow. Okay. When I was in English speaking countries, I was not on a group tour, but yeah. if it was in a different language, I was on the group tour. Cool. Cool. So what? What did you spend on, do you have the budget breakdown for us? Um, when I started looking at the trip, I think the flights were the most intimidating. Uh, and then I discovered a round the world ticket, which is the way to go. Um, I think my round the world ticket, I, I booked through the One World Alliance and I booked it by continent. So I had a four continent ticket. Um, and I want to say it was like $5,500. It gave me 16 segments, and you know they're really strict. You have to go. Uh, you get four continents or four segments per continent, and you can't backtrack and all this stuff. So I mean, it's kind of like a puzzle that you have to figure out. But that was a huge savings for me. Um, cool. cool. Before you move on past the airfare, I have to say this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. But I don't know if you know, Boots and I launched the world's first round the world international airfare around the world ticket airfare engine you don't have to just go on alliances we can do up to 25 stops you can backtrack nice and i'm gonna i'm gonna see how ours would have priced your trip out just to compare yeah i mean obviously it wasn't out when you went so you you couldn't have possibly known about it but i have to mention that if people do watch this that they at least compare us because you know go to one world check it out but try the boots and all indie trip planner too so you yeah. spent about 5500 on the airfare part and I let's go to, let's go to the rest and, of it. And I used that round the world ticket for my long hauls. So Sydney to Bangkok, but then I flew Air Asia and SpiceJet for the little the little dinky things. Gotcha. Um, as far as my Intrepid trips goes, I think I spent about seventeen thousand dollars on Intrepid trips. Okay, but so about a little bit less than two thousand dollars per trip. Right, um, and it really depends on where you are, like. Yeah. Um, my, my spending money for Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador for about two months was probably the same amount of money that I spent for two weeks in Brazil because Br Brazil is so expensive. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And, and so the, the trip cost, you know, includes that too. Um, okay. some of the trips had flights involved. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I was in Asia, um, there was a, a flight included in one of the tours, and when I did Tibet, there was a flight included in one of the tours. So those trips were a bit more expensive. Gotcha. Um, so fifty five hundred for air, about you said seventeen thousand for uh, for the Intrepid trip. So we're up to twenty two, twenty three, tw almost twenty three thousand. Sure. Did you have any and other then, your other time in Australia, New Zealand? Yeah, um, I was staying with a friend, and uh, I had access to a kitchen. So I did a lot of um, grocery shopping, which was amazing after not being able to do that. Ate a lot of salads just because I could. Um, you know, but you're in a foreign country, so I still explored and sure. played. And Australia is an expensive country. New Zealand's expensive, too. Um, yeah, I think it, I probably spent somewhere between five and $10,000. I know that's a really big ballpark, and so, I should But go That's okay. That's okay. So let's just say around 30000 that yeah. would be seven thousand. Yeah, plus, and then, plus or minus a few thousand dollars for right. almost a year of travel. Yeah, and trip insurance, um, vaccinations, all that stuff ahead of time. Right. But you know, if you're going somewhere and you don't need, need a vaccination, why why bother going? Totally. So, so thirty. So for sure, thirty five thousand dollars would have covered your year. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
Is yeah. It- and, and I didn't have any plan to work along the way. I know some people like stop and they hunker down somewhere and they work. Uh, and when I was originally planning this, I, I was thinking, you know, I'm a teacher. I'll go work in an international school that's centrally located and I'll take trips out from there. And then I thought, you know what, I'll just work really hard and save my money. Uh, so that I don't have to do this whole work thing. Oh. I can just So go try. you said you're a teacher. What kind of teacher? Special education. Okay, so you're kind of a it's a you're it's a regular job. You're not like a dot com millionaire. Nope. Traveling around the world. You did you, you spent about a year traveling around the world and you yep. spent about thirty thousand, thirty five, maybe a little bit less, to do all this travel, nine trips, a bunch of time on your own, and you're just a regular person. I am a regular person with an addiction to, to traveling. Totally, totally. I didn't mean that. You obviously you have a tremendous commitment to do that, but right. you know, because you're not a blog, uh, uh, someone that got it for free, you're not just like part of the you know wealthy class that you just you know gallivant all over the world. But you know, you, right. you you put it together. And so, how when you came back, did you go back into education? I did, uh, and. I'm currently teaching right now and, and enjoying having an income again, but also um, counting down the days for my next trip. And so. what, it, what is your next trip? My next trip is um, Dominican Republic, Panama, and Cuba. Okay, and this is an intrepid trip as well. Yeah, I'm doing intrepid through Cuba. Okay, cool, cool. And this is, this is not your free trip. You have to start your 10-card punch card all over again, eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> Cool, cool. So, how many more? I mean, what was? I, I I guess you told me your why in the beginning is that your par- your parents were a little bit worried about it. You 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 didn't want to have to plan necessarily all yourself. If you were to do this again, what kind of? You know what? Knowing what you know now, what would you? What kind of advice would you give to people thinking about doing something similar? Um, you know, I think if if you want to just go and really enjoy uh, an area and a country, um, intrepid trips are a nice way to do it. I mean, you go to places and all kind of backpackers, we all follow the same path. You know, there are good places to go because they're good places to go. Um, and intrepid takes you to those places, but they also take you off that beaten track. Um, I mean, you're never in a place that's not safe. Uh, but I did a trip that was Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Turkey, and it was amazing. And probably one of my all-time favorite countries um, was Syria. And, and that was something that I never, ever would have just gone to Syria by myself. Okay. But because I was on a packaged tour... Um, and I knew that Intrepid's philosophy, you know, if it's safe to be there... They'll take you there. If it's not safe to be there, they'll call off the trips. Like, you can't go to Syria right now, obviously. Um, But, like I said, it allows me the freedom to go to places that I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable going by myself. Um, And I also think, you know, I've done some trips that haven't been tours, and I've done those trips with some friends, and you miss the one and only bus for three days, and you are SOL, and you're hanging out in this town with nothing to do. Uh, And then everybody hates each other because... You know, one person messed everything up and missed the bus. Um, and I feel like, you know, being on a trip like Intrepid kind of takes that out of it. Totally. Um, where somebody else is in charge. And, and so for people like me, I can relax if somebody else is in charge. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know that feeling. I know definitely it's nice to just sit back and sometimes be, I don't want to say told what to do, but not have to figure it out. And, right, you right. know, independent travel when you're on your own, that, that is fun a lot of the times. But I know sure. a lot of people, you're probably the most extreme example, but who, who intersperse intrepid trips on their round-the-world trip sure. as sure. a way to just mix it up and go to maybe a little bit more difficult places too, like Syria. Sure. So you said Syria was your favorite place, am I correct? One of my favorites. What, uh, what about that experience in Syria left such a, a big, a good impression on you? Um, I think part of it was being an American, I was just apprehensive to go to Syria. Um, 
And when I got there, I was really nervous to like cross the border with an American passport. And I had my visa and everything was good to go. Um, but like, you know, you just, we are inundated so much um, by our news and by politics. I was nervous to be there. Um, and the people were just horrendously friendly. Uh, and, and people would pull over and they would see us with our backpacks and they would pull over the side of the road and just say, welcome to Syria. And um, I mean, it was just amazing. Um, and so I, I really appreciate that. And but also, um, they like to hire local guides. And so money is going back into the economy. And so like as I was um, putting some of my trips together, like I did a trip uh, that ended in Bali, Indonesia. And I spent some time in Indonesia by myself after that trip was over. Uh, but my local guide was able to give me some pointers of things to do that weren't on the Intrepid trip. Um, but because he was local, it wasn't just like he was a tourist too. Hmm. Um, appreciated that. Cool. That is cool. So they have, you, out of all the trips you went on, you, how do you, like off the top of your head, how many of them were, would you call local guides? Um, nine out of the 11 trips that I've yeah. done were local. Um, and the first two that I did, uh, Intrepid didn't have a policy of local guides, and since then they have changed their policy. Oh, so okay. if it was somebody like uh, one of my friends in Australia used to be a local guide or used to be a guide with Intrepid, um, had she kept that job, she would have been able to keep it. But when she resigned, they replaced her with somebody who um, is local. Wow. So. Wow. So that's a new policy. I was not aware of that. Cool. Any exceptions would be like, um, I think people in Egypt can't cross the border into Jordan and, and vice versa. So sometimes they'll have yeah. um, like Europeans or Australians do some of those trips for easier border crossings. I gotcha. I gotcha. That makes sense. Cool. Cool. So when you think back to your trip, was there one moment or a moment that just sticks out where you're like, yes, I'm so glad I did this. Can't do it. Can't, can't narrow it down. Well, is there, was there a moment where you were just, or was it just a feeling the whole time that you're just on high? It was amazing the entire time, and, and every, every area, every country, um, I think, amazed me because I wasn't expecting it. Like, I knew I was going to have a great time. I, I trust Intrepid to know that the tours that they put together are good and they're going to be entertaining and a nice mix. Um, but, like, when I was in Ecuador, all I knew is that the equator was there. I didn't really know anything about Ecuador. Um, and it's just a gorgeous country with amazing volcanoes. And we went to the rainforest, and they have um, really cool towns that have colonial fields. But you can also go and do whitewater rafting and canyoning and just all these amazing things. Um, I hiked the Inca Trail when I was in Peru. I did um, a hike through the Annapurna region in the Himalayas, and that was incredible. The best food in the world is in India. As long as you can stomach the food in India, you're good to go. Um, some of the nicest people, like I said, are in Syria, but also in Indonesia. Um, it, yeah, it's just amazing. So I, I guess as, as we start to wrap this up, what, looking back at your trip now, it's been a while since you did it. When did you get back from this trip? I have been back officially a year and a handful of days. So just a little bit over a year. Now that you have some space between when you got back and where you are now, you know, do, do you feel like, you know, what's, have you changed in any way? Has this trip given you, you know, what, what has it done for you beyond actually, oh, I saw things and, you know, did, did you get something that kind of has cha helped change your life in one way or another? Of course, I don't think anybody can take any trip and experience another culture and not come home changed. And I think that's why we do it is so that we are pushed out of these patterns and pushed out of our comfort zones and given more perspective on the world. Um, and, you know, I, I think it was interesting um, when I came back, one of my first uh, kind of like gut-wrenching experiences back in the U.S. was walking past somebody who was homeless downtown. And it was like, oh, we are a, you know, very developed country and, uh, you know, it's very hard to see this. Um, I don't know. I think just perspective on things. Um, as a teacher, we have some kids that um, have different cultures. Uh, and, and one of the kids... Um, they thought had disappeared and they couldn't find him anywhere and they looked in the bathrooms and they didn't see anybody with their feet on the stalls and then like a couple minutes later the kid came wandering out of the bathroom because he had been standing on top 
of the toilet, squatting down on top of the toilet, because in Asia they have squat toilets, and like no one understood, so I whipped out my phone and I was showing him pictures of toilets in Asia, uh, just to say like, no, like it's totally not weird at all. This is this is how it happens there. But, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, see, so cool, cool. Thanks for sharing that. I. Uh... We will have this interview up on uh, probably our YouTube channel. It'll be linked inside of the article. So, uh, Laura R., we appreciate your time for joining us and sharing a little bit about your experience around the world and specifically with Intrepid Travel. I just want to reaffirm that Laura paid for all of her trips and she's not a travel blogger or someone that got this trip for free. She just really feels aligned and loves the company and kind of the experiences that it delivers. So I appreciate your time and you sharing your perspective on this and uh, we'll talk to you next time. All right. Thank you. Cool.